Um, we have three campuses across the city. Our main campus at Polska, um, we have a Bishop's Court location and our Progovka campus. Um, a little bit later on in the presentation, you'll see where those are actually located on a map of the city. Um, we have a few different accommodation providers that we work with. Um, I'll talk about those in a bit. And I think Tosca actually lives in one of those providers, so she can give you a bit more information. Awesome. Um, so as a, um, a capital city in Europe, um, you can expect kind of this exciting cosmopolitan energy, um, but it's also quite an affordable place to live um, in comparison to many other European cities. Um, we have a variety of art studios and dedicated workspaces for our students. Uh, and I'll kind of go more into detail um, exactly where we're located and what you can expect in those areas. So the first accommodation provider that we work with is our student house, Botic. Um, most of our students live in this, either this twin room with um, bathroom for two students or uh, in an apartment style, which is two twin rooms with a shared bathroom between uh, four students. This twin room kind of starts around 390 euros per month, whereas the apartment style is about 350 euros per month. Um, it includes your um, your utilities and internet and all of that. So I think Tosca, you you live here, correct? Um, so as Alexa mentioned, I'm in Student House Botic. I've been here since October. It is located in a pretty safe neighborhood in Prague. It's called Vršovica. Um, it is very safe during day and during night. And also uh, the dorm staff and reception, they are very friendly and here to help you. Um, with, there are three types of room. You can either choose a single room, a twin room, or an apartment style room. I'm in the apartment one. Uh, I have a really nice roommate and two other roommates that are across the other corridor. Uh, we share a bathroom and um, I have a good time with them. Um, near the dorm, uh, there's this really nice park where I usually like to run in the evenings. Um, the location uh, is not very far from the Polska campus where my lectures usually are. Um, you can either choose to walk, which is a 30 minute walk, or you can go from by tram. I usually take the 6 and 11 to the Polska campus, which is a 12, 13 uh, minute uh, tram ride. Um, and as I mentioned, it's really safe. It's my favorite place and I wouldn't choose anything else. Awesome, thanks. Um, yeah, and so you can see the photos kind of down below um, of the outside of the building and then also kind of what the, the rooms look like. So it's quite newly renovated, um, really kind of updated. Um, there's also some study spaces within mm -hmm. the building. I also wanted to mention that. Um, we have a fitness, uh, which is all included in a price. Uh, we have a student's club where usually uh, we can have parties or uh, hang out. We have a ping pong room, uh, the laundry room. They're all located in the minus one floor. Um, and also the study um, room is a really good thing, which is the two big windows that you can see at the picture. Um, it is two floors and it's really a quiet place where you can actually focus on studying. Um, all of these uh, rooms, they have a card that you can get at reception and you can go whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Thank you. So yeah, this is where um, a lot of our students live. Um, it does fill up quite quickly. So if this is the provider that you're most interested in, you'd like to live here, please um, let us know in as soon as you can so that we can get you in the in the place where you'd like to be. The second accommodation provider that we do work with is called Zytrum. So there are uh, a few locations around the city. Um, most of our students live in one of two places and I'll show those on a map a little bit um, later on. Uh, these are also kind of newly renovated locations. Usually they start, the rooms start from around 340 euros per month. So it's slightly more expensive than, than Botic, but there are um, single and twin rooms available here. So if this is something that you're interested in, you can let us know too. 
And then the third accommodation provider that we work with is called the FIS. So here there are mostly studio, single studio apartments that range between um, 13 to 18 square meters. And they do start at about 550 euros for everything um, per month. Um, additionally, with these, there is a one-time service fee. So for your long-term accommodation for that one-year um, reservation, it would be a 4,000 crown additional fee. Uh, as you can see in that photo on the bottom right, uh, it is quite newly renovated as well. They're very bright and sunny rooms. This is located in Holishevice in Prague 7, um, and it's a great, great location kind of near, near a few parks. Um, so like I said, um, the accommodations kind of fill up at different rates. So depending on what your budget is and which neighborhood you'd like to live in, you can make sure that we get you where you want to be. So here um, on this map of Prague, you can kind of see these different accommodation providers, but also where our campuses are located. So in that middle of the screen, you can see our Polska campus. Um, and then a little bit further down, we have that student house Botic where Tosca lives. And it's actually quite close to, to one of the Zeitrum locations. So how, how far did you say it takes or how long it takes for you to get um, well, uh, to Polska, um, if it is by tram, it's usually like 13 minutes, mm -hmm. uh, but you can also walk, mm -hmm. uh, which is on the Grebovka um, park. You mm -hmm. go through that and then you go downhill, which is uh, the place where Polska campus is located. So it's about a 30 minute walk. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, not bad. Um, and then we can also see that Bishop's Court campus location. So um, this is where some of our art and design students have their classes. And then in that far right upper hand corner is our Pragovka campus. So our master's students have, have their, their art and design studios up there. Um, and in the north of the, the map, you can see the FIS, um, and it's next to Zytrum, the other location where some of our students live. So as you can see, there are a few locations around the city, so you can kind of um, decide which, which neighborhood you want to live in. They all kind of have their unique um, things to do and see, um, so we can help you decide what's best for you. Um, you can also see on the map that uh, there are quite a few parks throughout the city, and I'll kind of go into those in a little bit more detail later on, um, but there's a lot of um, green area throughout Prague too. So I'm actually going to play a quick video. Uh, it's only about a minute long, but some of our previous students created this to kind of show what their experience was studying in, in Prague. So that was kind of a quick snippet of, um, of different parts of Prague. As you can kind of see, there's a nice mix of, of old and new, um, both in like the student life and different activities that you can kind of get involved in. So we know that studies are important to you and that's why you're going to university, um, but there are other aspects that can kind of help make your, your studies more rounded experience. So we do kind of provide an active student life and a diversity of events that you can get involved with, um, including different art exhibitions and performances. So our, um, our School of Art and Design students do have their final shows, but they also do put on some, some extra pop-up shows throughout the year and different things that you can get involved with. We have a number of student societies and I think Tosca, you're, you're in one of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm part of the music society. Uh, along with that, we have a lot of other societies. 
I know that we have a clay society um, and anybody is welcome to join, of course. Um, as a music society, we usually meet every Friday at Polska campus at the bottom floor. Um, and we just get together, somebody plays instruments, we all sing karaoke and it's very nice. We've also uh, been to a karaoke room um, where we stayed there for like an hour and we just sang together. It's very fun, uh, especially to take your mind off um, everything that's stressing you during the week. Um, there are many ways that you can get involved, um, especially Agora Magazine is really good for art and design students um, to kind of get experience uh, that will kind of help you get the job, of course. Um, and you can also volunteer every year at the graduation ceremony that the university um, organizes. Uh, I was part of it this year and it is amazing. It also motivates you a lot because you're going to be there after three years um, if you're studying bachelors. Uh, and we also like from time to time during the year, uh, the school also organizes some events, some get togethers um, to eat dinner, drink uh, beers, drinks, anything. Uh, and it's very fun. Um, it takes your mind off all the studying because sometimes it can be too much. Yeah, awesome. And um, you were saying too, I think um, the buddy program that you're involved yeah. in? Um, the buddy program started last year uh, when I was still a prospective student um, by the student services. It is a program that typically uh, matches you with one of the current students so that when you get to Prague, you have a buddy to actually um, go around the city with, help you with. Um, I had a buddy last year and uh, this year I decided to be a buddy. Uh, and one of the students, uh, which is my buddy this year, is going to come tomorrow. And I'm very excited to meet her. I think that it's a really nice thing to also get to know also other students uh, before you get to Prague and kind of see of uh, what the inside looks like. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, we're excited to meet her too. <laughs> um, so yeah, as, as uh, Tosca mentioned, right, there's a lot of different societies. Um, there's also, I think, a yoga society, um, a gaming society. So kind of um, a variety of different activities that you can get involved with. And if there's something that you're really passionate about, don't be afraid of, of wanting to start your own. Um, a lot of our societies, our, our new societies just started in the last couple of years. So we're happy to kind of help you through that process and, and create something new. Um, yeah, as Tosca mentioned too, we have this Agora magazine. It's all student run. So if you know, writing or photography or kind of editing is something that you'd like to get involved with. We have this as well, um, and a variety of social and community events that um, you can get involved with too. So I, I sort of mentioned before that Prague is a quite green city. So there are parks all over. Um, I, we just have a few of our of the biggest ones here. So Letna, Petrin, Rigrovisari, um, Grobovka, as Tosca mentioned. So it's quite near Botic. Um, and then Stromovka um, is near the um, uh, the Fizz or the Zytrum location up in Prague 7. So these photos here um, on the right hand side, the one at the top is from Petrin um, and we have Petrin Tower, which is um, modeled after the Eiffel Tower in France. Uh, it's not as big, but um, the Czechs like to say it's just as tall because or taller because it's up high on the hill. Um, and the bottom picture is from Rigrovisari. This is actually right next to our main Polska campus. So it's it's right across the street. So if you want to take a break between classes or um, go after or on the weekend, it's a really great spot in the middle of the city. Um, and you can kind of see Prague Castle is back there um, in the background. So this is a, a nice hangout spot um, outside also, of Prague. Um, during the winter, we also have like a nice circle, mm -hmm. like an ice park, and it's really fun. It lasts for a few months. So if you happen to be in Prague during the winter, it's really nice to visit there. Yeah, yeah, there are like lots of cool things that happen here. So uh, not just in the summer as this picture shows, but um, also during the winter months too. And uh, in addition to this too, Prague is quite a cultural center. So there are a lot of things to kind of see and get involved with. Um, I know Tosca, you haven't been in Prague too long, but are there a few things that you've kind of been able to, to see and get involved yeah. with? Yeah. 
Um, I wanted to mention Naplavka first. I was just there yesterday. Um, it is a really nice place to hang out, like after classes, during like a uh, rainy day uh, to sit by the lake. Uh, they have these, a lot of boats, which are boat bars uh, that you can get to. They're currently renovating, but will be amazing for spring and summer. Um, my personal favorite is the National Museum, not of the museum. Um, it has a lot of sections. My favorite section is the animal part and all the animals there are real and you get to see a variety of species. Uh, it's really awesome. Um, and they also have the Olympics room with all the achievements uh, of Czech Republic ever since they started competing. Uh, it takes you about three hours to go throughout the museum and it's really nice. It lo it's located in the center of uh, Prague. Uh, it's really big and beautiful and you can see it from uh, basically anywhere on the Vaslavsky Namnisty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome, thanks. So yeah, N Naplavka, it's the, the bottom right-hand picture. So you can see it's uh, right next to the river. Um, there are also farmer's markets there um, in the spring, summer and fall every Saturday. So, and um, there are food stands and uh, groceries and, and things like that. Um, there are also food festivals that happen along the river. So if you're a foodie and interested in, in that aspect, there's a lot of that around in the city. Uh, there are a number of comedy festivals that take place um, if that's something that you're interested in too. And then that top picture there is of Old Town Square um, right in the middle of our historical center. Um, and yeah, so there are a number of both cultural and um, festivals and a variety of things to kind of see outside of campus. I also wanted to add um, in the old town, uh, we have the astronomical clock located, which is a very popular tourist attraction. Uh, it is actually the oldest astronomical clock in the world that is still working. Um, it has everything that you can see uh, when it turns 12, you have like the little birds that come out and it's usually full of tourists. Um, and it is the best place for tourists to be in. You have a lot of cathedrals and churches nearby and the architecture inside is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And it, yeah, it's something you can actually go to the top of. So there's a nice view of, of old yeah. time from up there too. Thanks. So um, in comparison to many other European capital cities, Prague is actually quite affordable. Um, uh, as you can see, we've kind of compared Prague to Paris. This website, Numbeo, it's um, a really helpful tool um, that you can use to compare even where you're living to costs uh, in Prague. So you can put in your city, choose Prague, Czech Republic, and see what the, the um, conversion rates for your lifestyle would be. So as you can see here, for example, a regular cappuccino in Paris would be about three euros 70. Um, here in Prague, it's only about two, 240. So uh, it's quite uh, lower costs in comparison to there. So um, Tosca, how, how have, have you found it in comparison with um, Kosovo? Um, actually, uh, considering the fact that uh, we are living in one of the best cities in Europe uh, and in Central Europe, uh, the prices uh, from Kosovo to Prague weren't that different. Surprisingly, it's maybe like 10% more expensive, uh, but it is affordable. And uh, I also wanted to mention uh, transport. Um, so uh, you get a lot of benefits actually with the ISIC card that the university provides for you, which is the international student card. Um, you get a lot of uh, discounts also from restaurants like Bagatier Boulevard, McDonald's, uh, electronics, a lot of shops, um, and the transport uh, when you uh, pay for it. Um, I paid for a whole year uh, where you can use as much as you want, all types of transport around Prague, and I only paid about 50 euros um, with the ISIC card. Uh, so it is really cheap because in my country, it's more expensive for the transport than that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think transportation within the city is really quite affordable. Um, mm -hmm. 
and it's quite easy to use, I would say. Yeah, you also have the PID Litachka, which is the app that you can get on your phone, which will show you all ways that you can get from one location to the other. You just need to know the um, tram stop or the metro stop, and it will show you a lot of ways, and it is very precise. Uh, it shows you in minutes if the time is going to be late it will actually show you the minutes that is going to be late for so uh you you are never late to a place you know exactly the minutes when you're going to arrive there which is amazing yeah awesome so yeah it, you can use this website on your own um, and put in your country or your city specifically and and see um how it compares with you so here um, we have a few photos of Czech, oops, sorry, um, of Czech Republic. They are all, um, here we go, sorry. Um, they're all in Czech Republic, even though maybe the one on the right doesn't look like it. Um, the top left one um, was from 2020. They actually made a, um, a giant picnic table all across Charles Bridge from one end to the other and anyone could bring food or drinks and um, people were playing music and sharing food and it was a really nice uh, cultural experience for everyone to kind of gather and um, just have a nice time on the weekend. Um, that bottom left picture is from a city called Chesky Kromlov. It's um, about two and a half hours from Prague and um, it's, it's kind of a, a fairy tale type city. Um, in the summer, some students or um, people will rent rafts and you can actually float down this river um, and camp along the way and actually end your weekend trip here in the city. So that's a nice summertime activity to do. Um, and that photo on the right hand side is also in the Czech Republic. So if you like hiking or walking or nature, things like that, um, there are quite interesting and unique things to see. Uh, that's me actually um, from 2016. And this this place is called Ver Velka America. It's about uh, maybe three hour walk from um, a castle called Karlstein, which is like maybe an hour from Prague. So there's kind of something for everyone. Um, if you like the outdoors or you like cities, there's a lot to be seen. And also, you know, Prague is, uh, in the center of Czech Republic, which is in Central Europe. So it's quite easy to get to other, other countries pretty quickly. Um, so Tosca, have you, have you had a chance to kind of explore? Um, yeah, I've had a chance. I went to Nuremberg, which you can see there uh, on the left side of Muni. Um, it was like a three hour bus drive with uh, Flix bus. It's very comfortable. It's not that much. Uh, and actually a fun fact that I read is that from Czech Republic, every two hours you can enter a new country because mm -hmm. it's in Central Europe uh, and the prices are very cheap. You can also get offers like especially for Poland. A lot of students go there during the weekend um, and it's very cheap and you can have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, as you can see, we've kind of, we put the prices in, in euros. Um, these are from Flixbus. So this is a service that a lot of, a lot of people use for travel. It's easy to, to use. Um, so for example, Berlin is about 17 euros and it takes maybe four or five hours from Prague. Um, Dresden there on the map is about two hours away. Um, Vienna is only about four hours. So it's quite, quite easy um, to just take weekend trips from, from Prague and still be able to, to easily and quickly travel, travel abroad um, from, from here. Um, today's event is dedicated to uh, scholarships and financing. So for those of you who are not familiar yet with our programs, uh, Prague City University is a private uh, university based in the Czech Republic. Uh, we are offering Czech and British uh, undergraduate and master's uh, degree uh, programs. If you are considering to applying to um, study with us and you need more information about tuition fees um, and uh, financial support you can get from us, um, today's presentation is, uh, is for you. Um, 
We do offer uh, a number of uh, scholarships uh, for applicants that are uh, looking to study with us. Um, we have um, academic excellence scholarship, social and professional engagement scholarship, and professional excellence and social entrepreneurship award. Um, this one is primary for blended learning students. That means for uh, typically working professionals who are uh, choosing to study on so-called blended programs that um, enables them to combine work and studies. Um, scholarships, these um, three scholarships at both um, the undergraduate and master's level are awarded up to 50%. Uh, for your information, uh, we do have um, refugee scholarship um, for uh, applicants who have this status in the Czech Republic. And we do also have scholarships for Ukrainian citizens who are currently um, in the Czech Republic under uh, temporary protection. Um, this presentation will mainly be about the three types uh, that you can see above. Uh, but if you have um, any questions about um, the refugee scholarship or about the support we give to Ukrainian students, at the moment, please get in touch individually. Um, right now, you can see um, a list of our um, tuition fees for um, our programs. So um, uh, foundation diploma programs uh, are for two semesters, one year, um, and the semester tuition in euros is about uh, 3,230 uh, per, per semester. Um, bachelor's programs are typically for three years, six semesters. We have British and Czech, as you've already heard and we have full-time and blended. So the price is a bit different for um, uh, depending on the mode of study. So for bachelor's full-time uh, British programs, that would be about 4,000 euros per semester. Uh, for Czech bachelor's uh, programs, it's a bit less, about 3,700 euros per semester. And then we have bachelor's uh, blended uh, British programs. Um, and the price, um, the amount per semester starts at 2,800 and can go up to uh, 3,700 euros. Uh, master's programs are offered uh, at stand with standard mode where you study for four semesters or intensive mode where you study for three semesters. So depending on the mode of study you choose, you would be paying either around 3,000 euros uh, per semester or 4,000 euros uh, per semester. For those of you who are looking to study at uh, British programs, uh, please note that there is also a so-called UK student body fee. Um, this uh, fee covers uh, the costs um, that are associated with uh, the registration as you as a student uh, on a British accredited degree program. This fee is um, 500 uh, British pound uh, per each year of study at the bachelor level and 800 um, British pounds for the total on the master's uh, level. Uh, the first type uh, of scholarship I'm going to give you more information about is academic excellence. Um, this type of scholarship is available for students who um, achieved exceptional results uh, during their previous studies. So simply said, if you had really good grades um, during uh, your high school studies or your bachelor studies, if you're applying for a master program, um, then you should consider this type of scholarship. Uh, we would be also looking at uh, your engagement with the school, with the wider community of your school or of your university too. Uh, we take into consideration as well financial, your financial need, and we do look at your uh, leadership skills. So if you were representing your school in um, competitions or you were a member 
of a, or you are a member of a student council or other student associations, and you've had a responsible role within within this group, then um, we would also uh, we would also value these um, these type of um, skills, activities, and and roles. Um, so that's um, that's an academic excellence uh, scholarships. Um, the amount available is up to 50% of the semester tuition. The second type um, is social and professional engagement scholarships. Um, for um, high school students who are typically applying to study with us on bachelor degree programs, we would uh, be looking at their extracurricular activity extracurricular activities excuse me their involvement in communities through any volunteering work or community outreach so basically if you have um if you have taken part in such activities if you have done something um outside of your school something that you didn't have to do but you have chosen to do um, you could consider this type of scholarship. Uh, we do look at um, any self-development activities too, whether you are a high school student or a, a bachelor student looking um, to study with us on a master's level. So um, if you play any musical instrument or you play a theater or you've taken any extra courses to work on your skills and your self-development, that is all valid um, experience that we consider within um, this type of scholarship. Uh, we look at, uh, similarly, as with the academic excellence, we look at leadership skills as well and your financial need. Um, if you're um, a bachelor, a student and looking to um, submit your application for a master's program, we would look um, additionally, we would closer look at your engagement or involvement at the workplace, obviously, if you work and if you have, um, if you have this work experience that you can show us and that is relevant uh, for the field uh, of the study you, you will choose. Um, so, um, these two types um, are available. Um, you cannot apply for, for both, for academic and social or professional engagement. You have to choose, um, you have to choose uh, one of them. Let's move to the third type, uh, which is Professional Excellence and Social Entrepreneurship Award that is um, primarily created for blended learning students, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the presentation, for typically for working uh, professionals. Um, this type of scholarship uh, can be awarded for exceptional achievement in a professional and or a social context. Um, you can be awarded this scholarship if you uh, prove us um, your leadership and entrepreneur skills. And uh, here I would like to um, emphasize that for blended learning students uh, who are combining uh, work and study, there is a great option with monthly payments available. Um, which means that you can pay a deposit um, before the, your semester starts. Uh, the deposit should be a minimum of 35,000 Czech uh, crowns, and you can uh, pay the remaining amount of your semester tuition monthly. So um, this is, this is uh, something uh, you can ask us uh, during uh, the admission process if you are if you're interested um, in that. Um, as a uh, university, we have a, a industrial network of companies that are uh, that engaged in um, some of our activities. We call that an industry network. Um, so if um, if you are a, uh, if you are working for one of the companies that are that is a member of the industry network, you are automatically um, you automatically qualify for a 10% uh, discount. Um, in addition to that, we have um, opened a, a bursary program for 
all blended uh, learning and postgraduate uh, applicants. So um, if your company uh, agrees to pay part of your tuition fees, uh, PCU will match uh, this offer uh, up to 20%. So to give you an example, um, if your company uh, covers 10% uh, of your tuition, uh, because it's in their interest um, that, you, uh, that you gain an uh, education, uh, PCU will cover 10% uh, and uh, you will cover the remaining 80%. Uh, 80%. Uh, if your company is very generous and covers 50%, PCU will uh, cover 20%, as this is the maximum percentage we can cover, and you will pay um, the, the, remaining, uh, the remaining percentage. This, is, um, this, pro this bursary program is, um, is, uh, is open to, to anyone. Uh, your company does not need to... Um, uh, take part in in our industry uh, in our industry network. If you are thinking about um, studying at School of Education, uh, please note that in addition to these um, three scholarships that I uh, mentioned uh, already, academic, social, and professional engagement, and blended, you can also um, you can also be awarded actually a study grant. So um, you qualify for a grant if um, you are a student or if you were a student at a Czech or a Slovak school or university, or if you work uh, or if you have worked at a Czech or a Slovak uh, university. So uh, if that condition applies to you, you're automatically, um, you automatically qualify for a study grant, uh, 30,000 Czech grants per semester. Um, um, we have 20 uh, study grants available for each year uh, of study. Uh, so that means it's for first successful applicants. Um, you can combine the study grant uh, with a scholarship um, that can uh, be awarded up to 50%, as you know already. And your final tuition with the grant and the scholarship, if awarded, uh, can be as little as um, 15,000 per semester, uh, up to 51,000 per semester, depending on the exact amount of scholarship awarded. So this is, um, this is something that is offered for um, School of Education applicants um, to the bachelor degree program. Uh, now you are probably thinking, uh, how can I apply for these uh, for these financial support and for these scholarships? So, um, first of all, um, the the scholarship application needs to be submitted at the same time as your application to study. Um, we would need from you a scholarship letter of 300 to 500 words where you explain why are you a good candidate for the particular type of uh, the scholarship you have chosen. We would then need a reference letter uh, from a school teacher, lecturer, employer, or any other relevant uh, referees. And then we would ask you for uh, supporting evidence. So. Um, this can be in the format of photographs, certificates, diplomas, uh, bank statements, or any other evidence that you think that is relevant and then you think that can help you uh, to, be, to, be, um, to be successful with your scholarship application. So if your um, scholarship application is successful, you will uh, find out at the same time um, as you will find out about your acceptance to the program. So if you're accepted to a, one of our programs, you receive an offer to study. And if your scholarship application is successful, you receive a scholarship award. Um, here, I always recommend uh, apply early because um, the study grants and the number of scholarship is, is limited. I would like to add as well that we do have payment, payment plans available. 
from second semester on our British programs. And for the Czech bachelor program, we have payment plans available from the first semester already. Um, if you're thinking about um, applying to study with us, um, you, you need to plan uh, your application um, based on our uh, deadlines. So um, we have different deadlines for um, students who do not uh, need a visa in order to study with us and for students who need a visa to study with us. So at the moment, we are looking at admission rounds for uh, EU and local uh, students and applicants to global blended learning programs. Um, you can see we have several deadlines uh, during the year. Um, shortly said, um, earlier you apply, more benefits you can get. So for example, at this point, we are, the upcoming deadline is by the end of April, it's round two for September 2022 applications. Um, if you complete the entire admission process um, uh, by this date, uh, you will be eligible for a scholarship bonus uh, 10% of the awarded amount of your scholarship. Or if you choose not to apply for a scholarship, you will be, um, you will qualify for um, a discount uh, of 3% on your first uh, semester tuition. Uh, if we look at uh, the deadlines and benefits for students who need a visa to study with us, um, you can see that the dates are actually the same, but here um, the upcoming deadline by the end of April, it's actually the deadline we, we recommend uh, you submit your application, you complete the entire admission process with us uh, by this date so that you can start your visa application on time to be here on time in semester to start your studies. The scholarship bonus um, is the same, 10% of the awarded amount um, and the discount on your first semester tuition, 3% is also there for those who do not apply um, for a scholarship. Um, Let's see the last steps um, in the admission process. So if you successfully um, uh, go through the admission process, you are accepted uh, on, our, on one of our programs and you also are awarded a scholarship, um, you decide to accept uh, your offer and scholarship award. Uh, we will issue um, an invoice for your first semester tuition. Uh, to secure your place um, in the program, you will need to pay um, your first semester tuition, your first invoice. Um, for EU students and local students um, and students living in the Czech Republic, you do not have to pay the full um, semester tuition in order to secure your place. 50% deposit uh, will be enough and the outstanding uh, amount will be due to uh, be paid um, a bit later. For visa students, uh, we will need a full amount uh, if you're a student who need, uh, who, who need a visa uh, in, in order to study with us. Um, once we, um, we receive your payment, your place um, in the program is, is reserved and it's, uh, you become a student at uh, Prague City University. So I can see a, a first question that came through the chat. Um, um, if you um, applied to a bachelor uh, in computing, that's a British uh, degree programs. So um, we have four schools. We have School of Business, School of Media and IT, School of Art and Design, and School of Education. The first three schools um, offer British, uh, British accredited programs. So Bachelor in Computing as a program at School of Media and IT and is British accredited. Uh, the only uh, Czech bachelor degree is actually offered at School of Education. I can see there is another question that is 
um, that came through uh, uh, the chat. It's about the final interview. So the final interview with the program leader is about um, your motivation to study, um, about um, your experience so far, about your expectation. So this is, um, it, it won't be about your scholarship application, but about your motivation uh, to study the program. And you should expect this interview um, to be about 20 to 30 uh, minutes long. Another question from Gabrielle, thank you. So Gabrielle is asking, in case of early application, there is a 25% scholarship bonus. Um, is this bonus added in case I get a 50% scholarship? Um, so yes, this 25% uh, scholarship bonus uh, will be added, uh, but please note it's 25% um, uh, from the amount from the awarded uh, amount of uh, the scholarship. So at the, this point, if you are looking um, to September 2022, um, uh, this early. Um, application deadline is, is over. It was um, in November, um, actually, but if you are looking at September 2023, um, yeah, of course, that, that option is, um, is still there. So if some of you who join us today are thinking about September 2023, um, and you are preparing to your application now, or you will soon be preparing your application. Of course, the, the, the best option for you is uh, if you want to save up on your tuition, um, you can aim for the first deadline uh, for September 2023 applications, which will be, um, I believe around um, October or November. So if you complete the entire admission process um, uh, in November uh, 2022 um, to study with us from September 2023, uh, you can get the biggest benefits. And we uh, had another question um, um, that came through Facebook. Um, hello, can you apply for another uh, scholarship outside the university. So yes, you can. Um, these All these scholarships and financial support that, that um, I showed today, that's a support from the university, from our side. So if you choose to um, explore other options, um, other funds, perhaps from your home country, that's up to you. Um, and it's up to you also to check the requirements. We can help you um, to prepare um, any documentation uh, you will perhaps need from our side, um, but that's up to you to, um, to ask us uh, during the admission process. We will be happy to help, of course. Just to go back um, to that question about the rounds. So um, if, um, if you are having your final interview um, these days and you are accepted uh, based on this interview and you secure your place um, with a payment at the latest uh, by the end of April, uh, you, you are eligible for that 10% um, of the amount awarded amount of your scholarships, of your scholarships, sorry. Today, we will be talking about the additional support that uh, Prag City University um, offers you as well as um, some extracurricular activities that our students enjoy and take part in. So uh, as you know, this is a webinar. So if you have any questions, um, please use the chat function at the bottom um, and we will be happy to answer any questions that you might have um, after the presentation is over. Hello everyone, I'm Philip, and uh, I'm a study advisor. I'm a member of the student services team at PCU and I also coordinate our health and well-being activities. So I'm excited to share some of the things that we have prepared and that we organize regularly for our students. So a big chunk of these activities happens before you get here, before you come to Prague and before students start the semester. So we help the students to, to get here, which includes information 
on arrival recently this was a lot about covid restrictions what do you need to get here things like this uh, but this is also a general service that we provide for students just uh, anybody can check with us what the current conditions are uh, another thing that we do for all the students like after you are done with our admissions team and you have paid and you are registered as a student you are on our, our list and we can be in touch and around uh, six weeks prior to the start of the semester we start sending out weekly emails which include uh, information on various topics uh, which are relevant for our new students uh, getting set up in Prague getting set up in our IT platforms and just uh, getting prepared for the start of your academic time at PCU. During those six weeks prior to the start of the semester, we also do an online IT tutorial, which is a like deep dive into our IT systems and platforms that uh, our students will be using during the time. So before this, we make sure that everybody has all the access uh, details to be able to use this system and we we guide the students in detail through everything that they need to know so that they are prepared once the semester starts. Also, one of the things that we do before the start of the semester and that we recently started implementing is a, is a buddy system. And the goal of this is based on knowing that really one of the main pillars what makes students successful and happy at PCU is having a network of friends and a network of support. So with this aim, a buddy system is organized and we have a network of our current students who have already been at PCU for some time and who are willing to support one, two or three new students. And we help them pair and we organize a meeting. And from that, the students are in touch, either in a pair or in a small group. And uh, our current students help the new students really get organized they share all their tricks and all the know-how, what helped them, what they struggled with, where they reach out for support, uh, how it was in the classes, what works, what didn't work, all this. And the students that took part, they reported, some of them formed like long-term friendships uh, from these uh, first encounters and just reported having really benefited from the support from the right, from, right from the start. Another thing that we do in student services, uh, we can help you uh, getting set up in Prague in terms of your bank account and transportation cards, because the student discounts for transportation, they are huge and uh, it's, it's just easy to get them. So we can help uh, students get the confirmation required for this and we guide them to the relevant places where they can then get these things sorted out. And on top of student services, also our, our the bodies in the body system, they're also available to answer all these questions and share these secret tips. And uh, one week before the semester starts, uh, this, call, this week is called a welcome week. And the, in that we organize a couple of events. One of them uh, is called orientation, where all the new students, they come and meet in person. Of course, there are still some students who cannot make it to Prague because of visa delays. We also organize this online so that the students can meet us, uh, the student services team, but most importantly, meet each other to see who else is coming, share some experiences, and most importantly, uh, form some friendships and make some new relationships, which really makes the start at PCU much, much easier. And there's also a tour of the of the campus involved and a tour of uh, nearby nice places and useful places to to know to get you oriented uh, around PCU campuses. So this is involved in the orientation during the welcome week and uh, another event during the welcome week is uh, an induction, which is a meeting with your with the program leader of the program that you will be studying with. And this is all, again a thorough introduction to all the requirements of the program, all the schedules, all that you need to know, and uh, it's also a time to really meet your program leader uh, and all your, all your classmates 
and uh, be set up for the start of the semester. Later, uh, during the start of the semester, we also organize a welcome party, which is a chance for an informal meeting for all the new students and some of the recent students to meet and uh, hang out, uh, make friendships, have a good time. And one thing that really helps new students like get set up it, uh, in Prague is are the Czech classes, which are offered for a small fee at PCU. And this really allows the students to like mingle in the society. Of course, at PCU, all is in English. But once you go in, in a shop and or in a tram and you can say just a few words in Czech, it really uh, allows students to connect with local people and uh, makes life here much easier and, uh, and happier. Right. I think I'm passing now to, yeah. you want me to continue? No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, there was so, some technical issues. Yeah, I'm back. Um, yeah, so uh, we wanted to give you more information also about different um, events and uh, uh, organizations that our student uh, get involved in. For example, um, there is uh, a number of student societies that our students uh, can uh, be part of where they share their um, interest with each other. If you go to our website, there is a handy page where you can see all of the societies that um, we offer right now. So if we scroll down, you can see there is the music society. If you like yoga, there is a yoga society for you. Um, there's also a clay society. There's the Czech mate, which is a chess club. Um, there's the developer student club, also blockchain society an art society, a running society. So as you can see, there are a lot of options for our students. And however, if you feel that none of them are to your liking, you can also speak to the student services and they will be help you to find one. So you can share your interests with um, your um, classmates perhaps. So, and just to give you a glimpse, you know, of what our uh, students do in these societies, there is our music societies and there was a video created that we want to show you um, so you can get a better understanding of what they do. So that was that. Hopefully you enjoyed this, you know, small sneak peek of uh, what our students do in the music society. So uh, now let's go back um, to our presentation and I will pass the word on to Anna, our current students who will just um, give you more information on the student council, how it works and some student led events. Anna. Thank you. Um, so my name is Anna and um, I'm part of the student council. I'm a second year creative media production student right now. Um, and the student council is basically a student led association of other students who are all interested in kind of planning things and organizing events for other students for the rest of the student body. So the student council has some people in like leadership and those guys, those guys usually talk more with the university to be able to organize these kinds of fun events, such as like the Halloween party. Um, we have some charity events that we run. Sometimes we also collaborate with the university to organize um, some of the welcome week events and the welcome party. So these kinds of things. So being able to be a part of the student council, you can kind of get more involved in trying to enhance the student life at PCU. So you kind of get to take um, 
your experience of student life at the campus and at the university into your own hands and be a part of it. So we have several um, events and sometimes we collaborate with other societies to organize some events. So some for the music society and um, things like that. Also like the Agora magazine and, th and such. So that's basically what the student council does. So we help bring more events and more life to the student life. Okay, thank you very much, Anna, for um, this information. So now perhaps, Philip, you can give us more um, info on the annual theme. Thank you, Alice, and thank you, Anna. I just want to add to what Anna said that uh, it was great to see what the student council members were able to put off for our new students during the welcome week, during the COVID times when most new students were online. There were a couple of students moved around Prague and they provided uh, live video sessions showing important and nice places around Prague to the new students so that they can get a feeling for Prague uh, before they are able to get here. And uh, to continue with the annual team, uh, every year uh, Living Futures in Initiative at PCU selects one team, which is like a common team for the whole university that all students and lecturers and the staff, they can gather their activities around this and then students can organize events and activities either in class as, as their project or outside class and this team like, like connects connects them all so for this year it's a bit of change and during the past times what is some of the projects the student did uh, was for example they a group of them for created a calendar for the next year with a selected topic or a group of students planted a tree in front of, a, of our building, or a group of students gathered and they went to clean like a dirty area in Prague. And there has been an Instagram series introducing the PC students and uh, much more. The floor is always open and we are here to support any initiative the students have uh, and they would like to get organized. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so also we have um, different speaker series that our students can take part in. Um, they are organized for each school. So we have the School of Business, the School of Media and IT, the School of Art and Design and the School of Education. So as you can see, we have the Master Speaker Series, the Media Innovation and Technology Series, the Visiting Artists and Lecturer Series, and also Excellence uh, in Learning and Teaching Series. So during these events, students have the opportunity to engage with a wide range of speakers from the very top of their profession. We are regularly visited by representatives and CEOs of different international businesses, as well as designers, writers, and so on. Um, if you're interested in this uh, sort of events, you may wish to know they're not only open to students, but also to the public. So if you're still not part of our PCU family, you can still um, join. Um, and also actually tomorrow, we'll have our visiting artist and lecture series at six o'clock prog time, uh, which you can join both in person if you're a local student or you can join it in Zoom. Um, and you can find more information on that on our website in the events section. All right, so I will now continue with uh, what kind of support is available for you uh, after the start of your studies. It means during the first semester and during all the other semesters that uh, the students spend at PCU. So on the picture, you can see our team of study advisors. There's actually one person missing, Lucia, who is the study advisor for School of Education. But uh, all the students have access to us as study advisors and you can, can reach out for academic support. It can be issues like uh, when a student is not sure about the study path, which program to choose next, or about the career path, or just any trouble related to the studies, but also light topics related to life because the study happiness and the life happiness are uh, kind of related. And uh, in student services that we believe that uh, the study time at PCU should be a good time but also we know it's not always easy and there's challenges. So we are really proud there is this uh, variety of support available for our students. 
This also involves uh, visa support. Once you are here and you need to extend your visa, uh, Nelly, who can, you, you can see in the picture, she can help you finding the right place, helping with setting up the documents, making sure that you have everything well prepared to extend your visa, for example. There is also a health support, which involves uh, recommending some medical facilities that speak English and that you know are accessible. Uh, recently, this was also connected with the, with the COVID uh, support and informing about the change of the restrictions and what's needed for access to, to the campuses, things like this. What some students really benefit from is uh, Czech language support. Me as a native Czech speaker and my colleague Lucia also, we are happy to check like any document that you want to make sure that the right information inside before you sign it, like a renting contract, for example. So that's something we can do. And uh, the next thing is the city practice, which is our external partner, uh, which has been providing free counseling support uh, for our students for many years now. It's PCU that covers the fee because we feel this is really essential that the students have some kind of support for issues that can just come up during the semester, like uh, depression or anxiety, or students having eating problems, sleeping problems, uh, things like this, or just feeling lonely. So City Practice is a group of professionals that are always open and students can reach out to them for to have a couple of sessions. Our students can use up to four sessions per semester for free for a counseling, for a therapy, just to get over a tough period in life if they lose a loved one and want just to have someone to talk to. So we are really proud that this is available to our students. And another support that's available is meditation and yoga. I do offer meditation sessions and Nelly offers yoga sessions, which just provide a long-term boost uh, for mental health, for the physical health, and also to how they are connected. So this is also offered for free to our students, uh, as well as uh, coaching, which is a new initiative. Uh, coaching can help students just to get clear on their motivations uh, and the goals, uh, or just uh, get clear on any topic that currently they feel stuck in their life. So there's also free sessions, free coaching sessions offered by me, or uh, coaching sessions uh, for, for a fee from our form, former colleague. So th this is something that big companies pay thousands and thousands, thousands for, for their employees. So we are happy that this kind of support is also avail available to our students. Uh, yeah, so I think this is the main, these are the main things of support. Of course, there is more and uh, as study advisors, we are just uh, always available and uh, can just uh, help, help students guide in the right direction in any, any difficult situation they find themselves in. So I think I will stop here, Elias, and pass back to you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, well, yeah, as you can see, uh, basically we do try um, our best and really hard to um, support you in every way possible. Um, before the uh, beginning of your studies, as Philip said, uh, during a couple of weeks before the semester starts and during your studies. After graduation, a lot of students choose to go in different directions, whether it's um, further education, so like Marcelo going from his bachelor's onto his master's. Um, some students decide to go into work and open their own organizations and businesses, and some choose to go on and be professionals in their fields. So, um, for example, um, one of our previous students who studied in our bachelor's in computing program, she finished her program, left and did some work for a while, and then ended up actually coming back and doing her master's in a different field. So she decided to study in international management. Now she currently works um, in, uh, in management for an IT firm. So this is just kind of one example of studying, leaving, and then kind of coming back. Um, two of our students from the master's in international management program, they actually met while they were studying. 
Um, and now they opened an organization together called Season Abroad. So this company is in Prague. They help to prepare people for interviews and um, professional development in order to work abroad in a variety of, of fields. Um, additionally, one of our masters in fine art students previously, um, she now works as, as a working artist um, and does shows in both the US and in Europe. So she kind of travels, travels around um, and gets to see different things. Um, and one of our masters in computing programs, for example, he has now authored three separate books and is kind of known to be a, a leader in his field. Um, on all of our, our program pages at the very bottom, so if you, you have a program that you're interested in specifically, you can see specific um, careers and plans that our students have actually gone on to do. So if that's something that you're looking for, we'd be happy to share more specific examples for your program of choice. And uh, Marcelo, I think you, you have some examples from your, your classmates too, yeah? Yeah, um, so I will start with my friends. Uh, from, my, from what I remember, three of my friends who started Bachelor with me, which is three, three and a half year, uh, years ago, uh, they already have their businesses and they're doing quite well, which is an astounding, which is only three years. Uh, another two of my friends, one of them is moving currently to Dublin to work as a senior manager and at Microsoft. So when you go study business, this is the path most people take. Uh, I'm kind of an exception because I want to be a teacher. So I've chosen the academic path, which I am super excited about. So research and teaching, but also I have the option and I will probably talk about my employment later on as I work at a bank and I've been doing that um, practical side of things as well as the academic side. But do you want to hear talk about the friends' businesses or probably not? Uh, no, we can talk about that yeah. later. Yeah, thanks. Great. Uh, so in addition to kind of our graduates stories, um, we do have some other opportunities to get involved. So this uh, video that I'll play for you in just a moment is a clip from one of these conferences that our, our school has put on um, through our Business Plus program. So this was from our Business Plus. So although the name business is in it, uh, it's not only specifically for businesses. So as a part of this partnership, we do work with the British Chamber of Commerce. Um, for example, one of our student, current students did join uh, one of the seminars through this Chamber of Commerce. Um, it was about um, sustainability and now she actually works on a committee and helps to formulate policies that will actually be presented to the Czech government for review so you know it's not only seminars for um, for knowledge learning but also to get involved in in a variety of of fields and I think Marcelo you also attended one of one of these is that correct yeah uh, I went to International Business Forum, which uh, this year was uh, focused on real estate, real estate development in the Czech Republic. So again, for business students, uh, this part is really important for business students. The networking and getting to know the people in the right positions is really a good skill to have and a must have. So for example, on the business forum I attended, I think yeah, I've met with basically the people who are responsible for building stuff in the Czech Republic. I had a, ch a chance to talk with them and even to, I had a chance to make a good impression. So that's another tip. If you get to these events, you can prepare well. And if you are prepared well, you can make a good impression. And from good impressions, you usually get either contacts or phone numbers or offers for a job. So <laughs> I really use that one. And to be fair, I have to say 
these events are extremely beneficial, like added value, because getting to know the biggest players and the people who are responsible uh, in these companies for recruitment, hiring, and strategic decisions uh, is extremely beneficial that I could go to these events. Great, thank you. So yeah, we have the British Chamber of Commerce and then this International Business Forum that Marcelo just talked about, um, the Canadian Chamber of Commerce, Italian Czech Chamber of Commerce, um, and also the Nordic Chamber of Commerce. Um, this one, um, recently they had the, a speaker, General Petr Pavel. Uh, he was the chairman of NATO's military and he's actually a slated presidential candidate for 2023. So these are kind of the people who who are available to you uh, and to actually meet with and, and network with. So it's not only um, uh, kind of lower level, entry level business uh, people, but really high level European leaders that you can also kind of network with during your studies. Um, and if these are events that you are interested in being a part of, we can, you can just let your uh, program leader know, your lecturers know, and they can let you know how to get involved with with these, um, they are paid events, and we do kind of help you with that and get you there. Um, and these can also, as Marcelo said, help you with networking and job opportunities. So it's not only this. Yeah, Marcelo. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, completely forgot. Just wanted yeah, to yeah. add, uh, it's not just about the business. It's about politics. I also, because of Prague College, I got to get into a British embassy and shake hand with the British ambassador here in Prague. Not just that, but amazing spectrum of political uh, people, which I mm -hmm. never thought I would meet, was mm -hmm. were standing right in front of me, which was interesting to say the least. Sorry, mm -hmm. just wanted to say that. <laughs> no, that's okay. Thank you. So um, I'll actually pass it back to you, and you can talk a little bit about an extra project that you did. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. One of the projects I've been responsible for creating is a T-side project uh, cooperation between three universities here, uh, Prague City University, T-side University, and the university in India. Uh, it, the project was completely developed by me and one of the friends, uh, one of my friends, who Alexa spoke about. Uh, it was completely designed by us out of well, we created it and. Uh, the aim of it was simple. Basically, the universities wanted to know if there was a space and possibility for cooperation, especially not just between the universities themselves, but in between departments. So what we created is we took people from art-oriented subjects, business-oriented subjects, and legal-oriented subjects. We put them in engineering-oriented subjects. We put them in a team uh, so that each group had a representative in a team, and we gave them a task, create a doable project that would have a social economical benefits for the people in rural India. I think the most unique solutions were creating a silo that wouldn't rot, which is ac actually incredible, uh, sustainable energy and how to fund it. And another, uh, another idea that was crowdfunding for uh, reducing the required investments for optimal agriculture. So we took these students and we ran this project for about two months uh, with multiple cohort, cohorts. Uh, I was a lead on the team. We were working under uh, Kate Boucherel, who is a lecturer at the Teesside University. And we basically had responsibility for over two teams, each one of us each. And we assisted them and gave them feedback on their ideas and how to implement them, how to communicate with other partners that could have potentially useful insight for them. And, and at the end of the challenge, there was a pitch deck presentation by the teams where the aim was not only for them to sell the idea and show that they can do it, but also to improve their presenting abilities. So in the final round, we agreed to have certain investments made and we, the winning team was awarded additional time with the lecturers that could help them develop this idea further and therefore create the actual businesses that would assist in rural India. Awesome, thank you. 
And so Sky, I know you um, have done some internships that actually turned into work. So maybe if you can give us a bit more information and background about your advanced practice and, and things that you've done. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, so I'm more on the art and design side of the school. And well, I think one of the nice things is like, I, I hear you have in like the business, a lot of these connections, but I, I think, or I, I know, like I've noticed during my master's that a lot of our teachers really like to connect us to artists in Prague, to like um, people who have like, doesn't matter what field you are researching at the moment, they really always know someone and they will bring you in contact if, either over like LinkedIn or Facebook or email. So that's really nice. Um, and next to that, um, we have an internship that you can do over the summer. It's called the Advanced Practice Program. And so for me, as an artist, I've always liked really technology. And it was in the first semester at Prague City University when my one of my teachers introduced me to AI, artificial intelligence, and how that can play a role in art. And I really got super excited about that. So I did my whole like, Next semester was one big research about AI and the possibilities within art. And um, so, well, um, the same teacher also introduced me to some contacts of hers um, uh, with studios who work with AI. And this is how I got my advanced practice with a studio in Boston. They're called San Lee and they do motion pictures. So they really look forward to like a future, like, like Hollywood, but then like, based with or like um using artificial intelligence as one of the as one of the tools to create super cool new visuals and i got super excited over the summer i really worked hard on it uh also because i liked it but also because i thought like well this is exactly what i want to do <laughs> like this is exactly what I, like kind of i found my voice as an artist uh, I always liked the technology side, but I never had the one thing I like specialized in, and now I had something. So um, after the summer, well, the people I worked with also got excited about my work, so they uh, invited me to stay. So I got a full-time job with them after the summer. I've been now doing that like yeah since September or October, and actually the master's program of future design is built in a way that you can do that, like have a full-time job and the hours that you do like in the evening are uh, are enough to follow the program a program and really um, do some projects next to it. So um, my I'm now in my final semester. I'm doing really cool uh, final project also using same techniques, artificial intelligence. And yeah, it's just been really fun to like go this direction. Awesome. Thanks, Guy. Thanks. Yeah. So in, in addition to kind of all of these different opportunities to get involved, um, we do have a speaker series in each of our four schools. So in our school of business, we have the master speaker series. In our school of IT, we have the media innovation and technology series. In our school of art and design, we have our visiting artist and lecture series. And in our school of education, the excellence in learning and teaching series. So through all of these, um, we invite professionals to come in and speak about their various areas of expertise. So they're really kind of targeted lectures um, and you can actually join even if you're not a student. So if one of these is kind of right what you're looking for, um, you can find out more on our Facebook page or through our website and you, you're welcome to, to attend either online if it's live streamed or in person if that's, that's how it's held. So I'll actually pass the floor over to Rai and he'll talk a little bit more about our industry network and moving forward. Great, thanks Alexa. Um, yeah, as you can see, each of us uh, here in this session have somehow connected to not only our academic paths, what pathways, but also the industry um, for our respective studies and these types of things. And our industry network, as we call it, is a collection of companies, both on the international scale on a local scale, um, startups, and even some of our own entrepreneurial students who you know, develop their own businesses, uh, kind of in a group form, we work together to kind of extend that classroom experience and kind of develop and prepare students for entering, let's say, the, 
you know, their career paths or whatever industry. But um, in addition to that, we also try to work with these companies on a regular basis to do things like um, providing internships. And um, in some cases, we actually build some of their uh, like practical experience into classrooms. So they actually get this kind of hands-on experience or training or portfolio development even before they actually get their diplomas. So they're well prepared to actually enter that market. And in some cases, some of the companies actually are so impressed with the work that our students do, they actually wanna hire them before they're graduated. So in many cases, our programs are developed in a way that you can actually balance work and study. And with great partners in our industry network, some of them which are here and even more, and it continues to grow, um, are actively looking for these type of opportunities with our students. So um, another part of it is not only that we want to work with you know big names that you recognize. We also want to be able to you know highlight the really great stuff that our students do, and it's kind of built on this mutual trust that we're recommending great companies or, or people that we trust, and also pushing forward the students that we really you know believe they have a high potential for success, not only as individuals but also perhaps in a company or in a studio or, or, or what it may be. The industry network gets involved in many other ways. Um, probably one that's the most popular, it, it specifically at this time of the year, is for our career fair and our professional uh, development series. Um, we actually happen to be running our career fair this week in a, a kind of a different form. Um, in, we're actually calling it career day. So each day is specialized for one particular company and the spotlight is on them and their offers. And in the future, I actually even think um, already in September and October, we'll be focusing on a more traditional, uh, larger scale event, um, similar to what we've done in the past with in-person uh, presentations and these types of things. So in addition to different ways you can get involved in the classroom or with the company themselves, we also try to surface their opportunities by posting it on our digital career board. And in fact, sometimes uh, if I know a student you know, more particularly, I can actually kind of fast track that process by saying, I think you're an ideal candidate for this really great position and I can help facilitate that connection. Um, and the student can kind of take it from there, you know, and that's uh, one of the things that we're really proud of in that regard that we do tend to produce students that are, you know, kind of self-motivated and don't necessarily need their hands held in that case, but we're always ready to prepare them in case they do need a little bit of extra, you know, training and support. So our industry network, you know, it, it does cover a lot of different things. Um, one of which is the, the career fair. I think, uh, Alexa, if that's not the next slide. Yeah, uh, it, it kind of takes different forms each year. Um, initially, when I started working here, we had a, the biggest one uh, in my time, which actually there's a picture on this slide, which had, uh, I think it had discussion panels. It had, uh, you know, of course, company presentations, and it had even some kind of interactive workshops all uh, housed on our, our in-campus presentation room, which is actually really cool. Um, as you know, the situation happened over the past two years, we, we still were able to produce a career fair, but it was more of an online version, which um, I think we can still be pretty proud that we were able to um, not go any years without having it, but it was, it was a completely different approach. But um, that being said, this year is now like an, another transition where it's not only online, it's not only in person, it's actually a hybrid version. So um, we're able to get some of our students that aren't physically on campus involved and also um, be in the classrooms, you know, kind of similar to the image that you see on the screen. So um, in any given career day or career week or career fair, there are many different ways that we approach it. Um, it's not only about recruitment opportunities or actual job offers, but sometimes they do interviews on the spot. Sometimes it's actually about a, a professional development workshop. Um, some of them which are run by me, some of them uh, by other professionals or some of our colleagues. So if you need to, you know, uh, update or even create a resume or a CV, or you want some tips on how to improve a LinkedIn profile. There's a wide variety of things that we offer in that regard. So um, it's one of my favorite things and one of my big projects that I do each year. So, I mean, I could talk about it forever, um, but I do encourage you, even, uh, even if you're not a current student, if you'd like to get involved and see, you know, what we have to offer in this regard, you could easily get in contact with us and I'd invite you either online or perhaps even in person uh, when it's available. So um, yeah, I mean, as I said, the career fair is a, it's a wide topic. So maybe uh, uh, we, can, we can go on to the next one and I'll, I'll discuss it a little bit more. Um, as I mentioned, we do um, 
try to give insight and you know some our own let's say expert advice on what we use LinkedIn for and how we use it. But one of the great benefits that we have this academic year was adding LinkedIn Learning to the offers that we provide not only to our students uh, that are currently studying with us, but also our alumni and graduates. So it, this is uh, typically a, a, a paid platform, um, but as a, as a result of some of our other cooperations and initiatives, we're able to offer this for free to our students. So not only do you get your regular class schedule in class, you know, one-to-ones with your lecturers and these types of things, this is a, a kind of on-demand learning that you can use to either supplement your current program or the studies that you're in or completely look at something else. So for example, if like me, you, you wanna study in the school of business, but you have a creative side like that's interested in photography or these types of things, I can focus on my studies and my program, but in my free time, I can you know learn how to edit a little bit better or get some tips on you know photography and these types of things. So it's like a personal example for me, but there are many different areas. And uh, actually coincidentally, LinkedIn Learning's main offers coincide with each of our schools. So the LinkedIn learning platform focuses on business courses, media and IT courses, and actually art and design courses. So although we didn't ask them to do it, it's really, it kind of fits really nicely. So our, our students really do have this additional support or additional resources that we're really proud to offer. Um, and this year has kind of been a trial run. So we're not only offering what's available on the platform, but we're even starting to create our own original content for, uh, for our community to use. So that's hopefully continue, uh, continuing to develop over time. And we're always happy to share those resources with our community. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit about LinkedIn Learning. And as I mentioned, um, LinkedIn Learning, also the career fairs and these other professional, um, professional development opportunities are offered not only to current students, but our alumni and, our, uh, alumni and graduates. So um, in that regard, uh, maybe Alexa, can you go to the next slide, sorry. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, it, it's kind of related to our alumni association, which is another another kind of project that I help coordinate. And to, I mean, most universities have some kind of you know networking program set up for their graduates and their alumni, and you know we we aim to do the same thing. Um, the idea here is that you once you study with us and graduate with us, you have what we hope is a lifelong connection to our university and our community. So it's not only about saying, yes, I graduated from there, but we still like to find ways to keep our graduates involved, whether that's having them as guest speakers or having them showcase maybe their own companies or their projects, or at the very least joining us for other you know, social events, whether that's uh, you know, a fun party announcing Prague City University, for example, our, our, new, uh, our new name, or simply just coming to you know, any of the other great events like the Master Speaker Series or, or these things that Alexa mentioned earlier. Um, and, you know, it's, it's always an opportunity to, you know, stay connected with those current classmates uh, that you had while you were studying, but also to, to meet a new class of, of graduates to see maybe there's opportunity to connect and uh, perhaps develop a whole new project that we hadn't thought about. So not only are there professional development or uh, access to the industry network, there's also great ways to stay connected to a community through the Alumni Association, all of which I'm involved in. So if you have questions about that, um, of course, I'd be happy to talk more about it and give you some more insight. So I think that's it for me at the moment. Yeah, thanks, Rod. Um, and the last thing that um, I'll kind of be talking about today is our student ambassadors program. Um, actually, Rai and I, along with our other colleague, also you know, head, head this. Um, so in addition to your studies, if you want to get involved, uh, this is a great opportunity to kind of see maybe what you're interested in because you would work with either the admissions team, student services, or marketing and events. So through this, you can gain a variety of professional experience. So um, kind of honing in on your interpersonal skills and communication. If marketing is kind of up your alley, then this would be a good thing for you. Um, working different events um, and kind of building relationships. So, you know, not only with, um, with other students, so you can meet students from outside of your program. Um, also you'll get to know staff better, like, like Rai, for example, who may know some different job opportunities. Um, and also people who are attending the event or depending on what the event is, you will have these opportunities to, to network with them as well. 
Um, Marcelo, you're a student ambassador. I know you've helped us with, with a few events. Maybe you could quickly give a, a background of what you've done. Yeah, uh, definitely. I'll say it this way. There are two ways to study university, the easy way or the right way. So when you do the easy way, you don't have to do much. You just have to pass. And honestly, it's not that hard to pass, but you won't get the benefits, the true benefits of the university experience. And that's the right way. By the right way, I mean, go the extra mile, do the extra activity, even if you don't want to, even if you don't feel like it, try it, at least try it. That's the approach I have taken and it has paid off beautifully. Like <laughs> seriously, not even trying to be a good person here, but it has benefited me incredibly. So from the first year, uh, since I'm a scholarship student, I always want to help and always want to be a part of all the activities. And people notice that, not just teachers and lecturers, but also the staff. So they give you more tasks and each task you get is a more responsibility you can bear. And the more responsibility you can take on you, the better you are, trust me. As a person, <laughs> if you can handle responsibility by going through difficult tasks, you will learn how to communicate. You will learn how to lead people, how to negotiate with them. You will learn how to be consistent, proactive, and effective. And believe me, when you become those things, when you truly become effective, uh, efficient, and proactive, people will like being around you. People will ask you for help. People will offer you positions. They will offer you choices. And honestly, if there is one advice I could give to anyone, think about it when you're going to the university. If you want to do it the easy way and have the consequences of that, or if you want to do it the right way and reap the rewards for your whole life. Um, probably shouldn't, but as a direct result of being a student ambassador, I have received an offer that is just way too much for me to have at this age. And it is straight up just because of the, as a consequences, as a, as a consequence of the responsibilities I've taken upon. So my suggestion is do it right. Don't do it easy. Awesome. Thank you, Marcelo. So we're just about out of time now. Um, just before we go, all of these opportunities that we've talked about today, um, they're available to all of our students. So we really encourage you to get involved, um, like Marcelo said. Um, so whether you're um, an EU local student or a visa student, these are available for you to get involved with. Um, and we hope you do. So for those of you who are joining us today, you might be at different stages in your uh, admission to study at PCU. And right now you might be feeling a little bit like this about the visa application process. For some people, they feel ready for it. They feel prepared. And for others, they're not really sure what to do. And you're maybe feeling a little bit afraid about what, about what the application entails and what you have to do. But don't worry. Alice and I are here today to help you and indeed so is the whole admissions team here to help you to make sure that the process goes smoothly uh, and you can apply for your visa on time. So today we're going to walk you through the steps that you will need to follow. Of course, first and foremost, uh, you will need to apply to your chosen profile at PCU. And if you're successful, you'll need to confirm your place to study with us by the relevant deadline, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Then we're going to break the presentation down into how you prepare for your long term visa application and what you need to do beforehand. Actually, what you can expect during the interview or the appointment that you have at the embassy to submit your application. And then finally, what happens once you actually receive um, the decision on your visa, which obviously is the fun part where you can plan your travel and arrive in Prague to start your studies. Now, it's really important to note at this point that in terms of what the timeline might look like, that's going to be different for each of you. So 
not only because you might be at different stages uh, in your admission to study with us, or maybe you already know that your quiz is confirmed to start with us uh, this September, for example, but also because the timings can be a little bit different depending on where you actually are based and which country you will be applying for your long-term visa through. So what you can see on the screen now is really just a rough estimate or our guidance uh, of how long things can take. So we recommend you to confirm your admission at PCU if you're looking at this September semester, ideally by the end of April or in May at the very latest. And that is because for the September semester, we advise that you apply for your long term visa uh, within the month of April or May. Now, it can take a varying length of time to prepare your documents. Uh, Alice is going to walk you through very soon the documents you will actually need to prepare so you know what you need to get. Uh, and you will then have to look into how you do that in your country. And that preparation time, depending on how different services work or how easy it is for you to go through those procedures, can really take anywhere between around four weeks on average, but it can really take as long as up to three months. So that's why we tell you to make sure you're prepared early. It's great that you're here with us today, and hopefully this information will help you to make sure you can get that document preparation underway. Once everything is prepared, you go and apply for your long-term visa. Uh, again, we're gonna talk to you about how you actually make that appointment, but it's good for you to know as well that in some embassies, you can get an appointment within one to two weeks. So you can gather all your documents first, and then you can make your appointment to apply. But in other countries, the demand is really quite high and the availability of the appointments is more limited. So in that case, we might recommend to you to request your appointment at the embassy early on, and then in the meantime, prepare your documents. So if you have any questions about that or you're not sure, please feel free uh, to ask your admissions advisor, get in touch with us, and we can advise what the individual situation is in the country that you will be applying from. So that's why it's important to be prepared and know what time frame you are working with to make sure that you can receive your visa and start your studies on time. Once your application is submitted, it can take anywhere between three to four months to receive a decision. It may be quicker than this, and in very rare cases, it might be longer than this. But on average, um, it takes around three months from the time you've submitted your application to actually receive your visa. And you can see as we go through, we're going to give you some top tips. Um, the one that we have here regarding your uh, timeline is about checking your passport expiration date. And that's because when you're preparing your documents and the documents you'll need for your visa application, you do need to have a passport which is valid for three months longer than the duration of your visa. So to give you an example, if you're applying for a visa from September 2022, which will be valid until September 2023, your passport has to be valid for three months longer after September 2023. So you need a passport that's valid until at least December 2023. And if you don't currently have that, uh, then you'll either need to renew it or um, your you won't be able to apply for your visa for the full year period. So that's a good top tip to check out your passport expiration date to make sure that there aren't any holdups when you're coming to preparing your documents. So uh, after this brief introduction, uh, I'd like to hand over to Alice, who's going to talk to you in a bit more detail about which documents you actually need to apply for the long term visa. Hi, hello, everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining. My name is Alice. Um, yeah, and I would like us to have a look at the documents that you would need to be preparing and the university. So we will be preparing for you. So let's start with the documents that uh, the university will prepare. The first one would be the confirmation of studies. It would be issued in the Czech language. Um, so there is no need for you to translate it or to do anything um, extra with it. You can submit it as it is. Um, you would need an original uh, document. So we will not be sending it to you, you know, via email or as a scan. It would be an original that would be sent to you via DHL or post. Um, so you can submit it at the Czech embassy. Then there is the confirmation of accommodation, and there are a couple of ways how you can obtain it. So um, you can either 
um, arrange your accommodation yourself. So um, maybe um, you can you want to have your private um, apartment, and so you would need to be speaking to the accommodation provider directly. And the accommodation provider would need to prepare the confirmation of accommodation for you. There is a specific format and a document that they need to be preparing, and we can share a sample with you so you know you know you have it as a guidance. You know exactly which document you would need to be expecting from the accommodation provider. Um, I must say it is quite difficult to obtain this document if you don't have any family or friends if you are arranging it in private. So we typically recommend going for the second choice, which is working with one of the student residences that we um, recommend. So as you can see on the screen um, right now, we have the student house Bottage. Currently, we have um, a couple of places left. So the, there is a very limited capacity. So at this time, we would recommend um, looking at other options such as Zytrum, the Fizz, and Rooms 5. So we've been working with these um, with these accommodation provider for some time. We know that they're reliable. So don't worry. Um, we can even sometimes, you know, when you book with them directly and ask for the confirmation of accommodation to pick it up for you, to check it and to put it together with the confirmation of studies in the same packet. So, you know, everything is good to go and you're sure that the documents are in order. If you're looking for private accommodation and um, I, the student rooms flat option might be a good option for you. And as you can see, uh, for our PCU students, we have a 10% discount code available, and we would be happy to tell you more about it if you are interested. Um, another important thing about uh, the uh, confirmation of accommodation is that when you book it yourself, is that it should be reserved uh, for one year. So your confirmation of studies would be for one year, and your confirmation of accommodation would also be uh, for one year. So that's our, and that's our second top tip for you. Now let's see uh, what documents you would need to be preparing. So that is your responsibility, but we will be happy to prefer, pre uh, give you um, more information on what uh, documents to prepare along the way. So not just here during this presentation, but we'll be sending you emails and more information throughout the way, you know, and making sure that you have everything prepared. So let's see. The first one uh, that you would need to um, obtain would be the proof of financial resources. So this must consist of a bank statement, which issued from an account in your name. Um, there should be approximately 4,000 euros, or it could be equivalent sum in your currency, um, in your account. And it should be very clear from the bank st statement that you have these funds available. So that is regarding the bank statement. Um, also, another thing, it is very important not to withdraw this amount, so 4,000 or an equivalent amount in your currency, not to withdraw it from your account and keep it in your bank account for the entire duration of the visa application, um, visa application process. And another important note is that your uh, bank statement should be translated to uh, check and notarize. We're going to talk a bit more about translation and verification a bit later, but this is just a very important thing that you have to um, remember. Uh, another thing is that you would also might be asked, uh, maybe asked to uh, provide a copy of your bank card, which is attached to the account. And if you have a sponsor, we recommend checking with the embassy what documents you would need to prepare um, so everything is correct. Um, then another document that you would need to prepare apart from the proof of financial resources is your police uh, criminal clearance check. Um, that would be from your country, so where you are a citizen, but also if you've lived um, in a country uh, for more than six months in the past three years, you would also need to be um, requesting this PCC, the police clearance check, um, from that country. So in this case, you would need to present two. 
from uh, the country where you are a citizen and from the one where you lived for more than six months in the past three years. Um, and just um, maybe an important thing to say is that this document usually takes the longest to obtain. So um, we do recommend uh, checking and researching in advance how and when to request it. Um, then you would also need to prepare the uh, two passport sized photographs, but that is easy. So we hope that you will be able to update them uh, quite quickly. Uh, and also another thing is the completed application form, which should be completed in Czech. And that is why we will prepare and share with you a sample application form. It can be sent to you uh, via email prior to your appointment. It will also be included in your uh, packet together with the confirmation of studies and confirmation of accommodation. If, you, of course, you are requesting it through uh, one of the student residences that we work with. So it would be part of this uh, packet and you can follow it you know, as a guide when you are filling in your application form. Of course, if you have any questions along the way, then uh, we would be happy to answer them. And just a couple of notes whilst we're on the documents that you have to prepare um, in case, you know, we appreciate quite a lot of information to take in. But where we talk about having a sponsor, this might be, for example, um, in certain countries, you have to be either 18 or 21 to have a bank account in your own name, or perhaps you will actually be taking the proof of funds from a parent, for example. So in this case, there may be a extra form that you have to fill in and the embassy can provide you with that form and that information. It is very common that even if you are using a bank statement from an account not in your name, but a parent's name, for example, or a guardian, that you would still be asked for a copy of a card in your name attached to the account. So if you were considering um, basically having a sponsor for your proof of financial resources, you really should check with the embassy around um, any extra documents you need to sign and making sure that you do have a way to verify that you can access those funds. Uh, that's why the copy of the bank card is typically required. And then secondly, regarding the police criminal clearance check, uh, maybe you're wondering if this applies to you. Uh, for example, if you're a long-term or permanent resident in another country, uh, so it's quite common we have students from the United uh, who are applying from the United Arab Emirates, for example, but they're applying with a passport from a different country. They would need police criminal clearance checks from both uh, from both places, both the country where they are a citizen and the passport holder for, as well as the place where they live right now. So if you've studied abroad previously or had different periods of time uh, where you've been abroad, then uh, that might apply to you. Or if you're a long-term resident and applying for your visa in a different country to the country that you're a passport holder for, you will still need a police criminal clearance check for both places. So just think about your uh, particular situation and be, be mindful of that. Uh, but they're the most common instances where those things would be requested. So just to give you a couple of examples to maybe help. Uh, and at this point, I'll hang back to Alice to talk about the translation and verification. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it is crucial that you not only gather the visa documents that I mentioned previously, but also translate them and verify them. Um, in most cases, you would need an apostille. In some cases, your documents would need to be super legalized. So we strongly recommend checking this with the embassy as the requirements may vary from embassy to embassy and country to country. Um, sometimes you need to have um, request an uh, extra appointment to see super legalize your documents. So yes, our advice is just to check this with the Czech embassy um, to make sure that everything is prepared correctly. Um, as for the translation um, of your documents, it should be um, an official translation and it should be completed by a sworn translator. Um, usually the list of certified Czech translation ca can be provided by the embassy. So again, in this case, we our advice is to just check, check and check again with the, with the Czech embassy um, yet to make sure that everything meet the requirements and you can successfully um, and you can successfully submit your documents. 
Thanks, Alice. We had a good question just come up regarding the bank statement as well. Um, so just to pop back to that slide, uh, maybe for a second, that to say that the bank account that you have, it can be a bank account in your name from your country. We're not expecting you to already have a check bank account. Um, the authorities just want to see that in your regular account, uh, you have the available funds that they ask for uh, to demonstrate that you can support yourself during your studies with us. So that's what the proof of funds are for. It's to demonstrate that you've got access to finances uh, for during your stay uh, in the Czech Republic whilst you complete your studies. But you do not have to have the account um, here in Czech Republic, but it is really important that the currency that your bank account is in is very clear, because obviously, like Alice said, there's a certain amount that the authorities are looking for, and you need to have the equivalent in your currencies. So it has to be very clear uh, which currency your bank statement is in. And just a quick note, as well as a bit of a top tip for the translation and verification whilst we're talking about this, um, Typically, some of the Czech embassies actually have a list of certified Czech translators uh, that they could give to you. Um, so you could always check with them. It, it, not all embassies do, but some do. So it's worth also asking uh, if you can find contact people there to make sure that you are having the translation done in the required format. Um, so we'll just move on from, uh, from here oh. to actually making the appointments. So the next step, um, after you've prepared all the documents, they are translated and verified, of course, the next step would be making the appointment. And um, as Natasha mentioned, you know, it depends on the timeline, it depends on each country. So it's really um, just would be easier for you to check with us based on our previous experience, the experience of our students um, on how long it can it may take to get an appointment. Um, so usually uh, to find out how to make an appointment, um, you would need to visit the website of your local Czech embassy. And to find um, the website, we typically recommend going to this uh, page, which Natasha uh, pulled up. So it is called Czech Missions Abroad. So you will see there is an, uh, the countries are in alphabetical order. So let's say we go to India, for example, um, and let's have a look. There are a couple of honorary consulates, but typically, of course, you would need to look for an embassy. So if we go down and find the um, Indian one, we'll see there is an embassy of the Czech Republic in New Delhi. Um, you'll see a bit of information. Yes, so the contact details and you, of course, you'll find the web, um, the web link. So let's see. And usually you can have um, the Czech um, version of the page, English version of the page, and of your um, um, mother tongue as well. So it, of course, depends on, on each website. But here we have the English one. So we will go to visa and consular information to find, um, uh, find out how to request an appointment. So here it is pretty clear on how to do it. So firstly, it is a Schengen visa. You are looking for a long term visa. So you'll be scrolling down and right here um, you'll see um, more information on the appointment booking. So you can see there is the for the next uh, appointment booking day. Click here. So this is where we will go and you will see all the instructions. So uh, we recommend following the instruction very carefully. Again, they depend on each embassy, the documents that you would need to attach on how to fill in the subject line, how to fill in the body of the email. So what information you should include. So it is just yeah, very important to go through it to see um, what information has to be um, in your email. And also, if you're attaching any files, you need to check whether it is a PDF format or any other format, because again, it is different in um, some embassies. So um, another tip that we um, have for you is to check the email, yes, so with the, all the information included and with um, all the um, attachments, 
uh, to check it twice or three times before sending it because uh, sometimes if you miss one line your um, request can be rejected so it is very important to include all the relevant information there yeah and so the next step once you find out um, the date of your appointment uh, would be the next step would be preparing for it of course um, and firstly we recommend checking um, that you have all the documents together and ready um, so perhaps you can have it in one folder you know in the folder where we uh, we have we will be sending you the confirmation of studies and the confirmation of accommodation so perhaps you would like to keep all of the documents for your appointment there and you also should take copies of all of the documents including the completed application because if there are any questions uh, about your applications if we have any questions if you need to check anything um, having copies um, is it, it would be needed um, if yeah if any questions arise and we'll also in this uh, packet that we will be sending you we will include a visa checklist uh, which we hope will help you um, to follow and to take off any um, all the documents that you've prepared. So please review this checklist, please review the information that is there. And also another thing, um, you would not only be submitting your documents, but you might need to pass the final interview during your first appointment already. It might not happen, the interview might be at an, a later stage of your application, but um, some questions might be asked, so uh, you should also prepare for the interview. Um, the questions that would be asked, they're usually around your motivation to study, about the program of your studies and the university. Then there is the admission process that you might be asked about, your accommodation, um, why you chose the Czech Republic and Prague, and so on and so forth. So from our experience, typically, if you're asked any questions during your first appointment, it is quite short, you know, and brief, but uh, still you need to prepare um you need to prepare nonetheless but with the second interview which may happen as i mentioned at a later date um, it would be a more thorough and in-depth uh, discussion uh, so what we recommend uh what we recommend doing um is having a call with us of course we will offer it um, at the earlier stage before your first appointment but also if you feel a bit unsure uh, before your second interview we can also have a call there to just go over any questions that you might have to go over any possible questions that might be asked at the embassy so you are know that you are prepared and after the appointment uh once um you successfully submitted the documents, um, you might be asked uh, for um, a tracking number. And so what we would ask you to do is to first let us know how your appointment went and you've, if you've submitted any documents successfully. And also, if you have this tracking number, please share it with us. Um, you can see there is a web link that we've included uh, on the screen. So this is where you can go to to check your um to check the status of your visa application and just for your information um, it can take around 90 to 120 days for your visa application to be processed from the point you submit your documents so this is just you know um maybe this would give you an overview you know to see when to wait for the status to change um yeah and natasha i saw that you wanted to add something no Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and so, yeah, just to um, proceed, the, at this point, um, you during the application process, you might be asked uh, for the second bank, bank statement, which is with an updated, so a more recent date. Um, and also, as I mentioned, you may be called for this um, second more in-depth interview. So just 
let us know if there is any update or if there is, you know, even no news at the point. We just really want to make sure, you know, that we are up to date and we know uh, what stage your visa application is at. And so after uh, some time, uh, when you receive your decision, um, please let us know what it is, of course. Uh, and so, uh, there will be other steps that you would need to follow after the uh, you hear from the embassy about your uh, visa. So let's have a look at them. Okay, perfect. So hopefully after you've gone through all the steps and prepared all the documents that Alice has just talked you through, you submit your application successfully, you interview if required, uh, and you answer all the questions uh, very well, then you should get the good news that your visa is being granted. Uh, at that point, in order to go and collect your visa, you'll need to purchase health insurance through the company called Visa P. Uh, you have to take your insurance out with this company. Uh, it's stipulated now by Czech law. So for the next five years, that's the company who your health insurance would be with. But you only need to buy it once your visa has been approved. Then you can arrange with the embassy collecting your visa. And as soon as you have it in hand, of course, you can arrange your travel and arrive in Prague in time uh, for Welcome Week, which is the week that takes place before classes officially begin and helps you to orientate in the city of Prague. Our student services team uh, introduce you to themselves and other students and help you get set up with a bank account, phone number, Metro Pass, um, answer any questions that you might have and make sure that you're ready to take part in your program. So that's why we really want to make sure that everything is done on time. For anybody considering September 2022 entry, um, Welcome Week will be in the middle of September. So that's really the latest time that we recommend you to be here. So we know we've given you a lot of information today. We're about at our half an hour. So if there are any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, by way of a quick summary, we just want to review what your next steps would be. So if you're listening to this and you haven't formally applied to PCU yet, that is your first step is to choose your program and apply. And then of course, if you are successful in your application and following a final interview with the program leader, you'll receive an offer to study. You'll need to accept that and then confirm your place to study uh, by making the payment of the first semester tuition fees. Once that's all done, you need to start preparing the documents you need, especially the police criminal clearance check. Like Alice mentioned, it can take different amounts of time uh, and this can be harder to obtain than you might think. And things need to be translation, translated and possibly verified. So even if you know you're going to be applying for a visa, but you haven't fully decided on your study plans yet or your university, we'd still actually really recommend you to get that PCC. Uh, one top tip, though, is that all of your documents cannot be older than 180 days. So they can't be older than six months. So if you're listening to this and you think, great, I'm going to go and do this straight away, but you're applying for September 2023, you might be a little bit too early. So it's great to be prepared. Um, but your documents have to be six months, have a six months validity period. And this is really important, actually, if there are delays in your country in terms of getting an appointment to make sure that you've got the documents in time for that appointment and that they're going to be valid. So that's just another top tip for you to bear in mind. Uh, so you're preparing your documents that you need. You should book your accommodation uh, if you're not requesting it through the university. Alice ran through uh, the options and there's a bit of a reminder on the screen now. Once you actually receive the packet that we've talked about that you're going to receive from us with your confirmation of studies and the confirmation of accommodation, you should make your appointment at the embassy if you haven't already. And then, of course, take that packet of all the documents in the correct format, apply for your visa, wait for the decision and then arrive in Prague. And in terms of the here and now and the deadlines that you might be working towards, uh, if you aren't confirmed to study with us yet from September, then you can see here that this is really our recommended deadline is coming up in two weeks time. This is to fully complete admission, not just the application package. So um, this would be apply, interview with the program leader, if successful, get your offer to study and confirm your place with the tuition fee payment. We cannot issue any documents for the visa application uh, until that fee payment has been made. So please see these deadlines 
uh, as consideration of being when you're ready to actually start the visa application process. Uh, of course, any documents that you need, you are welcome to start preparing in the meantime. If you are applying to uh, the February semester, obviously you have a little bit more time. Uh, or if you're looking ahead to the future for the next September, again, you evidently have more time. But these deadlines tend to remain the same simply because um, it can take three to four months, as we mentioned, for the visa application to be processed. So we really recommend you to wait no longer than April or May to actually confirm your place. So I can see that there are maybe a few questions um, coming through. Um, if there are questions, like I say, we're happy to um, take them. So just to clarify, um, yeah, if you've got specific questions about um, whether you can apply through the consulate or the embassy, uh, the probably the best option is to ask your admissions advisor or go back to that website we were on previously. That's where you can see um, on the website if your embassy is accepting applications or your consulate. Normally for the visa application, you have to apply through the embassy. Uh, it's not actually possible to get the visa in the consulate, but it varies country to country. So that's worth checking out on the website we showed you earlier. Uh, regarding the accommodation, just to clarify on that as well, you can indicate in your application if you would like the university to book accommodation on your behalf or not. Um, however, as you can see on the screen here, uh, places are limited and all accommodation providers that we work with, um, the contract is always between you and the provider. Um, it's not university accommodation, but of course we have trusted providers we work with and who we recommend uh, as we talked through just earlier on. So it's really up to you uh, if you book directly or if you want to reserve it through the university. And in terms of the documents, yes, everything should absolutely be in Czech language. So the documents you will receive from us, which are normally your confirmation of studies and confirmation of accommodation are originals in Czech language, but otherwise the confirmation of available funds and the police criminal clearance check would need to be translated into Czech. Plus if there's any other additional documents you need, they also have to be in Czech language. So hopefully that's answered your questions. And after this presentation, you know, at the moment, at the beginning, maybe we're feeling a little bit unsure, but we hope that right now you feel like you've got this, you understand how to apply for your visa, you feel like you will be able to do it successfully and on time. And of course, if you do have questions, you can get in touch with us on the admissions at pragcityuniversity.cz email address or have a chat with your individual admissions advisor and they would be happy to help. If you do go ahead with confirming your place, you can expect to see more of Alice. Uh, she is dedicated to uh, helping you complete your visa application on time and will be happy to answer any questions. But of course, if you need anything else or have questions about your program or studying with us generally, contact us on that email address and we'd be happy to help. So thank you once again for your time. It's been great having you all with us. We're very grateful for your participation. And we are very excited to hopefully see you um, either in September 2022 or February 2023 or in the future uh, and have you with us in Prague at Prague City University. 